Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're taking the first look in open beta with the FA-18C air-to-ground radar. This is work in progress and this is just the first early access version of it. Two ways of accessing first, from the air-to-air -air attack radar, we can go to surface, or if we were to reset that, if we went to air-to-ground, then it will automatically come up. A quick look at the functionality, just like the air-to-air -air attack radar, we can change the scale of what we're seeing. That is us down there, and up here is the range that we've set there. Currently 40 miles, it could be 80 miles, 20 miles, 10 miles, and so on. You can see the B-sweep acting left to right. If I want to change the azimuth coverage, currently 120 degrees, we can change that like thus. 20 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, and so on. Iso, can you quickly explain the advantage of minimizing the azimuth? Yeah, faster refresh times for what's in front of you, if you know it's right in front of you. For pretty much the same reasons as the air to attack, it's just going to be better and easier to find targets with lower refresh, uh, refresh rates, yeah? Correct. So, next is freeze. We can freeze, like on the teapot, we can freeze an image like that, and we can carry on and do stuff but the same Im frozen image will be there and then once we unfreeze the new image will show again as well as that we can silence the air to ground radar if we want for tactical reasons as well as that we've got a data sub menu currently with a declutter option which is defaulted on or you can turn it off and have basic flight instrumentation shown there back on and we've got our gain control we can change there out of data next is air that will take us back to our air to air radar so back to the surface eecm currently doesn't do anything map currently do it doesn't do anything but it will allow us to change between map and c mode c mode is obviously optimized for searching at sea while map is for searching on ground also to come in the future we're going to have exp1 two and three can you quickly explain what they will be so they're uh what's called doppler beam sharpening and you essentially get sharper images of a shorter of a smaller area and then you'll be able to uh get better detail and some of it looking pretty good on specifically on exp3 that doesn't work at the moment but tactically that is going to allow us to essentially zoom in on a target and get better detail for searching for i don't know scuds or tanks or whatever if i got that right that's what's going to make the air to ground radar work also obviously i've got my heading my mac my airspeed quarter half three quarters and full range based on that range there and zero degrees 30 degrees left 60 degrees left 60 right uh, 30 right next let's look at the actual returns like the air to air radar it works by signals that are returned back to the antenna so currently this black here is showing the coast and the sea and that's because the sea the water is currently absorbing our radar signals this kind of intermediate static area is going to be basically the desert, sand, normal ground. And the bright areas are going to be man-made objects, flat surfaces, buildings, roads, telegraph poles that create clear reflections that are coming back to the receiver. We also have shadow note. And I'm not sure if I can show you an example here, but possibly that object there may be causing that bit of dark behind it which would be an area where we're getting no reflection at all because just like the sun, it creates a shadow. Or if you look behind a mountain, for instance, it will have a shadow. Next, let's look at some of the controls we got and some more control that we have of this. We'll quickly jump into here. To change the elevation of our radar, we've got radar elevation up and down. We've got our TDC up, down, left and right to move our TDC cursor around we've got tdc deep press to create a target point and of course scs right to assign our tdc to the right screen so in this case we would want to bring this diamond back by assigning our tdc by pressing scs right sensor control switch right we can now manipulate this so if you use the radar up and down you can see using seeing this carrot here we can move the elevation up and let's watch if we move it all the way up and speed it up we are going to depopulate what we can see there we go all the way up there and um, no returns at all now because the radar is pointing, you know, up. I don't know exactly what the scale means, but up there somewhere. Okay, and vice versa. If you bring it all the way down to the bottom, then it's going to be pointing kind of low down to the ground. We'll get some more information about that later in early access. For the time being, let's just leave it in its normal position. Also note that that guy there is going to be our optimum elevation cube. So if we want quote-unquote optimum elevation we're going to reset it back there or as close as we can get it to there. Next, with our TDC assigned and the diamond here, we can use our TDC cursor to slew 
RTTC about and we can do stuff we can lock target so let's just say that there is a tower or something and I want to lock that I'm gonna press DDC depress I've created a target point you can see I've got a cross there I've got a target point here 46.6 miles it's flashing because it's currently off the extent of my HUD over in that direction by nine degrees so I'm gonna deselect that target with undesignate there so undesignate Okay, so we're going to fresh hold it now. We're going to show a workaround solution that we've got for using the harpoon with the air to ground radar with RBL mode at the moment. So let's just go from scratch, air to ground. Let's just set everything up how we want it. Uh, so we've currently got a maximum range of ship detection at about 43 miles. We think that probably will change in the future. So just bear in mind. So let's look at something we might consider a ship. Well, that is a lovely big return about mm, 40 degrees to the left so let's go and assign our tdc to the right with scs right let's move our tdc onto that target there let's create a target with tdc depress bang on that target now i want a bit of a closer inspection so let's get our flur on and it will automatically slew to that point there which you can see clearly is a consent sob now there is a bit of an accuracy you can see there and that's simply because the radar just isn't set up for accurate mode at the moment it's just going to give you a rough idea where that is but as you can see that is clearly a uh, an aircraft carrier we want to attack so with that in mind we're going to go to our stores page we are going to harpoon we're just going to speed that up so at times okay it's aligned mode from bowl to rbl range and bearing launch flight parameters can stay the same terminal parameters can stay the same seek is going to be the distance from the predicted target range at which the harpoon is going to seek the target and i'm going to put that on large just to make sure we get that guy otherwise that's it we're in range all i'm going to do now is point towards the target which the hud is showing me is 36 degrees to the left so let's just turn that 23 miles away remember that the teapot can uh, look all the way out to about 40 plus miles so you've got plenty of range on the uh, visual vid for the moment for the workaround and we're going to fire harpoon bruiser times one get that set there get our autopilot on and watch the missile go <laughs> look at that i'm in formation with my missile i've never seen that before that was funny boomy got him so that's our workaround for the harpoon rbl at the moment that's what we've got to show at the moment i hope that's useful and see you later